Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. I think it was uh, the last day of January when we gathered uh, to pray uh, for evening prayer. So welcome back to those who are uh, joining us again, and to those who are joining us for the first time, thank you for being with us uh, this evening. So as Leah said, let's begin our um, gathering this evening with a prayer. And this prayer um, was written by a great uh, spiritual writer, one of my favorite spiritual writers, Henry Nouwen. And it's his Lenten prayer. And so um, I'd like to share this prayer with all of you as we begin this evening's, this evening's um, gathering. So we place ourselves in the presence of our loving God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lenten season begins. It is a time to be with you, Lord, in a special way. A time to pray, to fast, and thus to follow you on your way to Jerusalem, to Golgotha, and to the final victory over death. I'm still so divided. I truly want to follow you, but I also want to follow my own desires and to lend ear, an ear to the voices that speak about prestige, success, pleasure, power, and influence. Help me to become deaf to those voices and more attentive to your voice, which calls me to choose the narrow road to life. I know that Lent is going to be a very hard time for me. The choice for your way has to be made every moment of my life. I have to choose thoughts that are your thoughts words that are your words, and actions that are your actions. There are not times or places without choices, and I know how deeply I resist choosing you. Please, Lord, be with me at every moment and in every place. Give me the strength and the courage to live this season faithfully so that when Easter comes, I will be able to taste with joy the new life that you have prepared for me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So again, that was a, a, the prayer that was written by um, Henry Nouwen. Uh, most of us know Henry Nouwen is, uh, was a great spiritual writer, and he wrote one of my favorite books, The Return of the Prodigal Son. So I often refer back to Henry Nouwen, and I try to go back to some of his writings uh, every, every now and then. Anyway, happy Lent. Happy Lent, everyone. <laughs> happy Lent. You're probably surprised why I greeted you a happy Lent. Why I greeted you a happy Lent. Now the readings for tomorrow, Ash Wednesday, from the book of the prophet Joel, St. Paul, and the gospel of St. Matthew, set the tone for the season of Lent. The scripture readings for tomorrow, they set the tone for the season of Lent. Now, when we look at these three beautiful scripture passages, they all suggest a rather joyful, joyful preparation. Now, before we dive into what I mean by that, 
Let's refresh our memory on what Lent is all about. Lent, Lent comes from the word to lengthen or springtime. That's what it means. And when we talk about spring, we see new life. And when we look back on the fall and the leaves are falling and then you have winter and then you go to spring, lots of life. The flowers bloom. That's why there are lots of allergies during springtime. So Lent providentially, I think, or I believe, falls during the springtime to remind us that Lent is all about life. It's all about hope. It's all about, it's all about life. The prophet, the prophet Joel begins the reading tomorrow by using by using an image an image of a return the prophet joel begins the passage tomorrow where the prophet says even now says the lord return to me with your whole heart to return. I think of this image as more of a homecoming or coming home. Now, I, I don't know about you, but when I think of someone returning home, there's always great rejoicing, isn't it? when your daughter or your son, when they come back from wherever they're coming from, there's always a sense of anticipation. There's always a great joy when they return. Whenever I go back to the Philippines, there is some sense of joy whenever I see them and they see me, whenever I return home. There is a sharing of story, lots of embraces, lots of hugs. There's reconciliation. And of course, when someone returns home, there is also a sharing of a meal. There's always a sharing of food. And when we look at the image of a return, I believe that, I believe this is what our yearly observance of Lent is all about. Our annual return, our annual return. The image that I could think of or the story that I could think of is the very popular story of the prodigal son. The very popular story of the prodigal son. Let's look at that. Let's go back to the story rather quickly. A man had two sons. And then the younger son asked for his inheritance from his father. Keep in mind that asking for the inheritance or you receive your inheritance only when the person dies. So when the younger son asked for the inheritance, he basically wanted the death of his father. Imagine, just imagine the pain of the father when his younger son said, give me a share of my inheritance. Basically, he says to his father, I want you dead. But the father, out of his love, gave the share of his inheritance to the younger son. And the younger son, as we are told in the Gospel of St. Luke, went away, 
He spent all the money that was given to him. And then he squandered everything. Then he found himself in dire need. He even hired himself to one of uh, the local laborers. Then he realized, he realized something. The story of the prodigal son, I believe, is a story of one who wandered in the desert where he not only squandered what, what was given to him, but in the desert, he realized, he realized what he had done. His time in the desert was a time of reflection. It was a time of realizing the consequences of his actions. And also his time away from the father's house, I call the desert, he knew that he needed to ask for forgiveness from his dad. Keep in mind his words. His words as he was reflecting on what he had done, he said to himself, he said to himself, I'm going back to my father and I will tell my father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. So he went back to the father's house. As he was going back to the father's house, I'm sure he was rehearsing what he wanted to tell his dad. He probably was repeating, Father, I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. I have sinned against you, Father. I no longer deserve to be called your son. He probably repeated that again and again and again. But again, Luke tells us that as this younger son was getting closer and closer to his house, as he was getting closer to his return, the father caught sight of him. And as the father caught sight of him, the father did not waste time. The father ran towards his son. He approached his son. He embraced his son. He hugged his son. And at that point, the son was not able to say anything. The son wanted to say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. But the father hugged him, embraced him and said, shh, be still, be quiet, come home, come back. I'm glad you have returned home. That's all the father could say to his son. And notice there was a big celebration. There was a great, there was great rejoicing because this son was lost and has now been found. My friends, our Lenten journey, our Lenten journey is one of is one of, if I may say, coming home, a return. It's about making that U-turn. It's about making that U-turn, making our way back to the Father's house. You and I, you and I have journeyed through this past year, a very, a rather rough, and tough year. The past year was not a pleasant one. There were big bumps. It was very turbulent. 
we experience gigantic waves. And because of that, there were feelings of anger, perhaps, impatience, perhaps, frustration, perhaps, yes, fear, and even doubt. Yet, God understands all of that. God understands all of that. And the good news is that God never, never left our side. God continues to be with us. Now, Lent, this Lent, as we go back to the Father's house, there are three things, there are three things that the church is asking us to do. And they're quite easy. And so often when we enter the season of Lent, we make it a little bit difficult for ourselves. But the church is only asking us for three things as we journey towards the desert as we make our return to the Father's house. Only three things the church is asking all of us to do. And we call that the three pillars of Lent. First, fasting, fasting. All of us are invited to, to fast during the season of Lent. But fasting does not only entail food. Fasting or Lent is not the time to go on a diet, if I may say. Lent is not the time to go on a diet. Because so often when we think of fasting, immediately we associate it with food. We say, oh, I'm giving up chocolate, which is good. I'm giving up carbs. That's all good. But it's not all about food when we talk about our spiritual fasting. Fasting is about looking at our own lives, reflecting in our own lives, our spiritual life. And perhaps we ask ourselves when we fast, what is it that I want to let go of? What is it that I want to get rid of so that I can make room, I can make room for God? What is it that I want to get rid of to fast from so that I can continue to build a, a better relationship with God and with others? What is it that I want to fast from or to get rid of so that we can enter into the second pillar of Lent so that I can have a better prayer life so that I can pray more so that I can communicate or intensify my prayer life. Now, I know I'm speaking to the choir when I talk about, about prayer. But during the season of Lent, we are invited to reflect and ask ourselves what changes or what adjustments, what changes or adjustments do we need to make so that our prayer life might become even more fruitful. One of the things I believe that hinders us from entering a, or developing a good prayer life is resistance. What do I mean? What do I mean? Matthew Kelly wrote a book, Resisting Happiness. And he talks about this particular, particular attitude 
called resistance. Matthew Kelly says, resistance is, is what stands between you and God, he says. For example, he uses, Matthew Kelly uses the example of an alarm clock that when you wake up in the morning, you hear the alarm go off. And you say to yourself, ah, do I really want to get up now or no? Do I really want to go to bed still? Do I want to continue to sleep? You probably, you know, turn off the alarm and you go back to bed. You resist the fact that it's time for you, it's time for you to wake up. Resistance, Matthew Kelly says, wears a thousand masks that I think is detrimental to our prayer life. Matthew Kelly says, resistance wears a thousand masks, namely fear, doubt, procrastination, pride, friction, self-deception, or even laziness, Matthew Kelly says. So in order for us to enter into or to develop and grow in our prayer life, we need to do some self-reflection and really ask ourselves, what are the things that we need to fast from? What are the things that we need to let go of so that I can enter into a better dialogue with God. Then from our prayer life, from our spiritual lives, flows acts of charity. And we call that, of course, almsgiving. Almsgiving is not just about money. It's not just about money. It is not just about helping others. What we forget when we talk about almsgiving is that the first thing we need to do is to be good to ourselves. That we need to take care of ourselves first because if we don't take care of ourselves, then how can we take care of others? How can we take care of others? So almsgiving is both being good, being kind to ourselves, and at the same time, being good to other people. So as we enter, as we enter the season of Lent, as we enter the season of Lent, let us keep in mind those three, three wonderful things that the church is asking all of us to do. We need to fast, we need to pray, and we need to give alms. You and I will start the season of Lent tomorrow. And then we're going to end the season of Lent on Holy Thursday. So Holy Thursday is the last day of the season of Lent. And as we begin, as we begin the Mass of the Lord's Supper, keep in mind that it's no longer Lent. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter, that's what we call the Paschal Triduum. That's no longer, that's no longer Lenten season. During the season of Lent, <clears throat> and the Paschal Triduum, we're invited to fast and to abstain. This pertains food now. We fast and we abstain. But when do we fast? We only fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But we abstain from meat every single Friday of Lent. However, congratulations to most of you. 
if you are at the age of 60 and up, you are free. For, look at Julie. Julie is like, yeah, uh, you don't have to fast. You're encouraged to do so if you can, but you don't have to. Okay. But all of us are invited to abstain, to abstain from meat. So that's the law of fasting and, and abstinence. But there's another fast that we fail to observe. And that is what we call the Paschal fast, which begins, which begins Holy Thursday all the way to, to Easter Vigil. That's what we call, that's what we call the Paschal fast. The hope of the Lenten season is to prepare ourselves for the great feast of Easter. The question that I always ask myself is this, what happens after Lent? What happens after Lent? The real Lenten season, I think, begins begins as soon as we end Lent. Because so often, just like Advent and Christmas, we are so good for 40 days. We're so good for 40 days. We have fasted, we have prayed, we have given alms. But after the season of Lent, what happens? Are we going back to our old ways? We shouldn't. If we have given up something, that's why I said avoid food, because if you have given up wine, I can't give up wine during the season of Lent. That's a big no-no. No, I'm just kidding. But if you have given up something, then that should help us grow in our relationship with God. That should help us grow in a relationship with others. So just be careful when we think of what we are fasting from. Yeah, what we're fasting from so that we can continue to grow in our prayer life we can also continue to grow in doing some acts of charity okay i'll pause there just in case any of you uh if you have any questions you can unmute yourself if you have any questions No questions. You must be crystal clear. <laughs> Have you ever wonder wh wondered why we start on Ash Wednesday during the season of Lent? Because when you count when you begin counting from Ash, Ash Wednesday to Holy Thursday, that's more than 40 days, isn't it? It's more than 40 days. But when, when we look at the season of Lent, especially when it comes to our fasting and all of that, Sundays are supposedly not counted as one of those. And if you remove Sundays, then there are only 36 days. That's why we had to add Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then it becomes 40, I think. That's why. There is also a rule during the season of Lent that in addition to Sunday, if you are fasting from something, you do not fast on the Feast of St. Joseph because that's a solemnity, which happens to fall on a Friday this year. So do not fast. I believe the bishop I heard is giving us dispensation from abstaining from meat because it's the feast day of our diocese and also the Feast of the Annunciation of the Lord, because that's also 
a solemnity, so you don't fast on those days. Okay, there's a question here from Colleen. You can unmute yourself. Yes, sir. You're forgetting St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> ah, that's not a solemnity. <laughs> that's, that's a real solemnity. <laughs> that's true. That's true. St. Patrick's Day. That's true. We'll, 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 we'll make it a point that we we do that as well. I know with Bishop McGraw before, he'd always um, give us conversation. Right. Um, Father, um, you said Matthew Kelly's book was Resistance to Happiness? Resisting Happiness. Oh, just Resisting Happiness. Thank you. He even wrote something on don't give, a ch don't give up chocolates for Lent. He has an article on that one. Don't give up chocolates during the season of Lent. I was looking for it to share it with you. I couldn't find it. Any other questions? Wow. Yeah. Father, why are Sundays excluded from Lent? Because Sunday is considered as mini Easter. Because Sunday, we always celebrate uh, Easter in some ways. Okay. Those are little Easter's. <laughs> right, thank you. So Father, th did I hear you right? Anybody over 60? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody over 60 <laughs> gets a vaccine shot? No, no. Anybody over 60 is can abstain from eating meat? No. The fasting. You fasting. don't have to fast if you're over 60. But you are encouraged to abstain from meat every Friday. Make sense? Because every yeah. Friday we, we all are asked to abstain from meat. Right. Chicken, pork, beef, lamb. Some some people ask, is egg considered meat? No, that's not considered as meat. Any other questions? So, yes. Father? You were muted. Yeah. So, so you mentioned uh, Paschal fasting, and it seemed to be a separate entity from the Lenten fasting. That's correct. Can you say some more about those differentiations and what fasting, a Paschal fasting? It's Paschal fasting is the same as the fast that we do Ash Wednesday and, of course, Good Friday, although the, the Paschal fast includes Good Friday. So you only eat one full meal uh, on Good Friday and then um, uh, Holy Saturday. Thank you. You are muted, Sebastian. That's okay. You you sure? Remember, mm -hmm. even, though, even though there are four days, because we begin Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Although there are four days, and in the creed we say, Jesus rose on the third day. Have you ever wondered why Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and yet we say, Jesus rose on the third day? It's because we follow Jewish calendar. So thirst, it, and Jewish calendar or Jewish day begins sunset. So sunset of Thursday to sunset of Friday is one day. Sunset of Friday to sunset of Saturday is the second day. And sunset of Saturday to sunset of Sunday is the third day. 
That's why we say Jesus rose on the third day. So right now it's already uh, Wednesday if we in, in Jewish in Jewish day. Other clarifications? Done. I was told I shouldn't go over 45 minutes. <laughs> All right. So there are two questions that I'd like for you to ponder when you come back on, um, on Thursday. And Leah has those questions. I, I think Leah will post them uh, on the, the, the chat, chat box. And when you come back on Thursday, um, we'll talk about them in small groups and big groups. They're very simple questions. Are they posted, Leah? Just now, Father. So everyone check your chat uh, from me. And then if you're able to, you can just um, use your mouse to drag and copy and paste. If you're on a tablet or something that makes it harder for you to do that, I can also send the questions in an email tonight when we close this evening. Not if that sounds like a good idea. All right. It's <laughs> Karen, for sure. Okay, you got it. You got it. So there are just two questions. One is what am I willing to let go of or what am I willing to let go to make room for what God wants to give me during the season of Lent? Why am I asking you to reflect on that? Because so often, so often when we talk about when we enter the season of Lent, the first thing that comes to mind is the first thing that comes to mind is what am I giving up for Lent? But we fail to ask ourselves, why are you giving up something that is to make room for something good? So we should ask ourselves if we are giving up something, then are we open to what God will give us during the season of Lent. The second is, how do I want to celebrate Lent this year? I know it's unique. I know it's very different this year, but we should ask ourselves as well, how do I want to celebrate the Lenten season this year? With all its uniqueness, with all its penitential aspects, how do I want to journey during the season of Lent? Okay. I wanna keep it at that and I will end with a prayer so that um, we'll keep it very light this evening. And so let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And please don't forget, if you have not uh, received or have not picked up your book, I Thirst, uh, they are available for all of us. And it's a 40-day reflection. Uh, there's a day today, there's an everyday reflection that would help us on our journey during the season of Lent. So we still have plenty of books uh, outside of the church. So if you have not picked up your a copy of your book, we still have uh, books. All right. And I'll turn it back. Thank to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for our first session for this journey through the desert. 
Um, we will be back again together on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. I will email those reflection questions to you tonight so you can take some time to um, pray with those questions and maybe do a little journaling if that's something that works well for you. We will have some terrific facilitators from our Growing in Friendship with Jesus team with us on Thursday to help us with our breakout rooms. Um, and then I wanna um, refer you back to our website. Annie built out a beautiful page for the Lenten series, which includes some options for places where we can post the recordings. So if you know someone who missed tonight, but doesn't wanna be behind and will join us on Thursday or next week,